Uh, we've got quite a bit of unfinished business here. Uh, welcome back to Sheffield Live TV, or is it GM TV? Gary Megson TV tonight. Gary's, <laughs> Gary's still here. He has, he has a, he, I've, I've, I've given that a great deal of thought, uh, <laughs> Gary. Uh, it's nice of you to react like that. Uh, and James Gregg, who will join us with his, with his roundup shortly. There's lots more going off, including the other side of the city, believe it or not, uh, Gary. But just one topical thing, and obviously we're going to talk a lot about Sheffield Wednesday and, and Bolton Wanderers as well in the, this half of the show. You'll be aware that uh, Mark Davis has been on the brink of a, a move to Hillsborough. It's been on, off, and I think it's back on again now. Yep. Bit of haggling going on over fee and severance terms, I think, at Bolton. Mark Davis is a midfield player that you signed for Bolton, I think, in 2009. Right, yeah. He's, he's a talented lad, I'd said... Uh, when you say I signed him, I did because I was the manager, but um, I'd spoken to Chris Evans, um, who was down, down with me at Wednesday, with you, yeah. and uh, I, I said, we need somebody at this club who can carry the ball. We, I, I felt we didn't have that, and we, we needed to try and change Bolton without doing it in one fell swoop, because one, we didn't have the money, and two, you, you wouldn't be able to do it quickly enough in the position. So anyway, he said, uh, what about Mark Davis? I said, yes. And then uh, we took him there, and he, he, as I say, he carries the ball as good as anybody, and certainly at championship level. And if they could get him, I think he'd be a good signing for them. Because I, I think the, the one thing from the outside looking in now is um, I, th I think um, Wednesday with Forestieri playing all the time have got the capacity to finish in the automatic spots. I really, really? do. It's do. nine points to gap at the yeah, minute. Yeah, I know, but I yeah. can go really quickly. You know, I'd, I've, I've done it myself at West Brom, 10 points with, um, I don't know, about 10 games to go, and we did it. And, and once you get that momentum, and especially down there with the crowd, it will be a big, big thing. So I think with Forestieri playing all the time, they've got that capacity to do that. With him not, if he doesn't play all the time, I think then they might have an issue getting in the top six. But Mark Davis would be similar to that and I spoke to Forestieri's similar uh, to Forestieri no no not no. not in terms of a player but he carries the ball but yeah. um, really really well whether they could play in the same team that's Carlos's job to do like but I remember speaking to uh, Forestieri's uh, agent two years ago and um, we were chatting away he's an Argentinian I f I'm sorry I forgot his name but he, he used no, to no. play for um, Newcastle and I said if I get a job and come back the first player I would go for it's Forestieri because I could I'd watched Watford quite a bit and couldn't figure out how he wasn't playing all the time and how the big ones were, weren't really after him because I, I think he's as good a player as you're going to get mm. certainly outside the Premiership but I think he's a Premiership player and should be playing at that level Wednesday they've done really well to get him yeah three million pounds looks a snip uh, eleven goals it, five it, in five it does it? yeah but it's like but with Mark Davis I, I think he's um, he the one thing I used to say to him, he doesn't score enough goals for the for the quality that he's got, and, and he has a tendency to drift out of games. But if he can start to eradicate that, and I think one of the things he would, he'd be going from the if he does sign for Wednesday, and he should do, he's going from the sublime to the ridiculous. He's, he's going from playing in front of Bolton supporters to Wednesday supporters, and you know you couldn't get different. Well, I know your your, ex <laughs> your experiences have been extreme in, oh, just in a both bit. cases. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you were Bolton. You were effectively hounded out of that job by by supporters um, in the Premier League. You're in yeah, Europe. No, I was I was hounded in. And I was uh, the, the, one of the things when I knew I was coming on to this today, and I knew you'd ask us. And I'd, I'm not yeah. sure that Bolton's first game. I wasn't. I didn't pick the team. wasn't involved. But I actually signed for Bolton on the day that Bolton played Braga. And I think Carlos, I'm not sure if he was manager then at the time. Mm. And, and I got booed coming out the tunnel. The, the, the honeymoon period just was non-existent. And it, you know, and I'm, when people talk to me now about, the, you know, I've had two promotions to the premiership and like, you know, and I, I would say I've done a good job at everywhere I've been. Nottingham Forest, I can't prove it because the results were rubbish, but that was a, I've never been to a football club like that. Mm. But at Bolton, I was really, really pleased and proud, of, even though maybe you shouldn't say that, of what I did there because there was no help from anybody there. And managing is difficult enough. Managing under them circumstances for two years was was horrendous. You know, like we, mm. my first game, uh, I remember uh, that, that we won. I think we drew the first four or something, which weren't a bad achievement. But the first game that I won was Manchester United at home. But going into the game... 
like I'm, I parked my car up and this bloke slaughtering me right in my face about you haven't won a game yet. And like Bolton had won one out of ten by when I got there. I think some of these characters are now looking back thinking he wasn't such a bad manager after all, bearing in mind the plight that the club is in well, now. Well, you look where they are now and, you know, I'd, I'd, I made mistakes. Like you, you said to me earlier on in this interview about Wednesday, did I, did I regret things? At Bolton, I regretted taking them on because I thought, well, they don't like me and I certainly don't like them, so I'll show it. And I, I remember yeah. getting manager of the month and they, you know, all the PR people saying it's a great opportunity out on the pitch and I, and I, I went, stuff them. Yeah. I said, they've not helped me one little bit since I've been at this football club and they've not helped me get this manager of the month. I don't want to do it. Yeah. And it, looking back, it was the wrong thing to do because you ain't ever going to beat that. But it's difficult when you're stood getting booed and slaughtered by your own supporters all the time even when it goes well it should have gone better and yeah. you know and i look back and, and i still look at things now and, and they go i oh, big sam big sam did this and big sam did that and he did a brilliant job for him but i didn't take over from big sam i took over from little sam yeah. and they'd won one out, one out of yeah. ten games but they'd won four out of 26 when i got there the place was in a complete yeah. mess and then they go oh, you spent a lot of money but i think in total i spent 17 million because we had to sell before we could buy, but I took the wage bill down eight million. The yeah. costs came down two million a year, and they still stayed in the Premiership, and um, you, you still get slaughtered. There's reasons like this why I can't understand why you're sitting in this studio <laughs> and not doing the job. Because don't get Probably. many current football managers coming in. They're, they're just, they're, they're, no. We're going to go. We're, we're going to pick up because we've got loads more to talk about. James, absolutely. Gray. I'll try well, and rattle through it. Cause on, really enjoyed this. It's been great. But mention. For goodness sake, Manchester Sheffield United, because we course. need a bit of balance on the <laughs> of show. Of course we do. Well, and Blades I'll, I'll, fans, I will make it up to you. I'm I'll, honestly, I'll make it up to you. <laughs> I'm more than happy to uh, bring Sheffield United to the table. Of course, lots of excitement surrounding their fixture with Manchester United at Old Trafford last weekend in the FA Cup third round. It still hurts, doesn't it? Wayne Rooney's 93rd minute penalty sending the Blades out of the FA Cup. And of course, on that same day, Sheffield Wednesday, they prevailed, beating Fulham to book their name in the fourth round. Uh, both teams in action on Tuesday night as well of course Wednesday playing against one of Gary's former clubs against Bolton thrilling game wasn't it by all accounts former Wednesday man Gary Medin scoring Gary Hooper with a brace and Wednesday picking all three points up there in what I've heard was a fantastic performance talking of great performances and comebacks though Sheffield United well what about them they were 3-0 down and looked down and out across the Pennines against Wigan and they managed to get three goals in 20 minutes to level level everything mm. it was great because I was getting a load of abuse on Twitter off a couple of Wigan fans and um it was great because at the end I didn't say anything for the whole for the whole <laughs> time because obviously I was like furious. Gets to the end of the game and I just said, oh, "Well, I did you were lucky to actually uh, actually get a result there, weren't you?" Well, they, they, they shouldn't have been three 0 down. No, and Wigan shouldn't have finished up three three. I suppose but but Sheffield United is it is that turning as well? Finally, finally, but it's, the gears are grinding, aren't they? You're hoping <laughs> that me. I'm hoping <laughs> I know, I'm hoping that's turning in the same way. No, that you, did, that, that, you know, I, I, like I say, I've, I've lived in Sheffield most of my life. I get a load of stick <laughs> off United supporters, but I, I've got to be honest. I like, I love the banter. That's what's great mm. about being in a big city with two football clubs. And I don't dislike Sheffield United at all. People think I do because of some of the things that mm. have gone. And I seriously don't dislike it and um, you know when my last game they were giving me a load of stick but I lifted my shirt up my shoulder on the Wednesday yeah. but they reacted in the right way to that so like you know those kind of things it, it really doesn't bother me but this city needs two premiership clubs so like you know I don't dislike them and I hope they get them some way so back. Nigel Atkins manager got the experience got the record that suggests he can bring them back yeah he's got a great record at that level it's uh, I, I think United just have to bite the bullet a little bit and there's quite a few few football clubs console themselves in the way oh, we're playing all right and like and you've just got to strip all that away one of the things when i joined wednesday like inconceivable to me oh it's tricky playing here with all the crowd well that's why you sign there yeah you know wednesday's ground is a fantastic atmospheric ground but it's showing its age but the thing about that football club is the support Nothing else. It's, it's just support. an asset rather it's, than a... You've got to look forward to it. And when you sign for Wednesday, not because the ground's great, not because the training ground's great, because it ain't, mm. not because it was in a great position because it wasn't. You sign there because of the support. So then you can't turn around after a while and say, oh, it's frightening us a bit. Right. You've got to use that. And, you know, you've, you've, you've got, got the players. right characters. Yeah. yeah. And United need to do, in my view, need to do exactly the same. Yeah, I need to bite the bullet on keeping the manager as well for a time. As yeah, well. yeah, but, but yeah. that's always like the thing that they tend to do, isn't it? Like, yeah. Because it's the easiest thing to do. It's not always the right thing.
No, agreed. James. Both teams in action this week, and obviously Yorkshire Derby, Sheffield Wednesday against Leeds at uh, Hillsborough on Saturday. Early kickoff that one, just to remind you, 12.30 that one. Blades travel down to Colchester. Talk about our non-league teams in the local area. Hellam FC, they've won their first of four consecutive home games. An emphatic style, 5-0 over Hall Road Rangers last week, but a weekend off this week before Tuesday's game against AFC Mansfield. And Sheffield FC looking to bounce back after two consecutive defeats, and they take on Shaw Lane aqua force at home this weekend uh, rugby union sheffield tigers they won 26 nil not surprising later uh, just maintain their 16 point gap at the top of national three north fantastic to have two clubs doing so well sheffield they were called off last weekend but they welcome at the bottom of the league burnage uh, to abedale park on saturday uh, basketball sharks again they've got a couple of weeks off now uh, for their winter break but the women's team in sheffield the sheffield hatters uh, they're playing in the women's basketball league uh, cup final uh, this weekend on on Sunday they've won their last six games so they're on still in form heading into that encounter and that game's actually been streamed live on Sky so that shows you exactly where the women's basketball game is going. Uh, fantastic stuff from them. The Steelers take on Nottingham Panthers at the arena this weekend. Lots of talk about that in the papers this week. I know Dave Sims is very excited about it and they've been showing some great form and they're currently second in the league with two games in hand over top team Cardiff. Uh, great stuff from them as well. We'll finish off with the individual stuff. Two local golfers got Matt Fitzpatrick and Danny Willett both in the European side playing in the Eurasia Cup team uh, this week playing against the Asia team. It's like the Ryder Cup but it's Europe against Asia rather than America. Good practice hopefully to see them both wearing the European shirt again in the Ryder Cup later on this year and boxing. Could Kel Brook be defending his world title in front of his adoring Sheffield fans at the end of March? We'll see won't we? Alright mate thanks very much indeed James. Maybe Lots going on and he was through it very, very quickly there. Very interesting. I want to get it. He, 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 <laughs> he's gone to the long ball game, and that's a myth where it's associated with you. We'll come to that in a minute. You've got a friend in Bolton. Just had a message <laughs> from a, a, a guy who works at the Bolton News called Mark Isles. Mark Isles, yeah, I like yeah. him. Nice guy. He yeah. likes you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> and, and a journalist from the Midlands, Nigel Pearson, passes on his, mm. his, his regards as well. So you've got some friends out there, Gary, after all. I have, but they're not noisy enough. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, quite, yeah, mm -hmm. um, to drown out the others. Yeah. Sheffield Wednesday now, you see him on the box, you've already said you like the style of the chairman, he's come in and mm. done what he said he was going to come in and do, yeah? I, I, I think so, he just like, he, he, he doesn't seem to be wanting to hold court and be in the papers and tell him how, how wonderful he is all the time. Uh, he came in, said he'd like to see the club in the, uh, you know, in the premiership in two years, but then just leave it at that. He seems to be doing all the things he can do to enable that. And, and uh, you know, and, and the manager, I think, is doing a really, really good job because it can't be easy coming from a different country into mm -hmm. because I was in a <laughs> I was in a local pub. I was having something to eat, and uh, this guy comes up to me. He says, uh, "Carlos comes in here." I said, he says, "He's a really nice guy." I said, "Does he?" And he went, "Yeah." He says, "He comes in on Saturday nights after games." I says. Um, Tell him make sure he keeps winning then. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that if you're going to no. lose games. <laughs> but like yeah. everything seems to be going in the right direction, which is like you know, and it, it's it's not before time, is it? It's like you know, it's it's a fantastic, fantastic football club. But as I've said, what makes it is the support. When when I went down there, the thing that I would look forward to most of all, and I used to feel a bit stupid because I barge people out of the way. I had to get down that tunnel. Yeah. I'd, I'd drink me brandy for me throat. Uh, for throat. throat. Well, for me throat. Well, to watch us sometimes, yeah. you need a yeah. drink. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd go hurtling down, down that tunnel, just so I didn't miss the high old Sheffield Wednesday, because I loved it. And you used to sing it, didn't you? Oh, I did, yeah. Clap, but, oh, I loved it. it. But when um, I went to a game once, they played, I can't remember who they played, but Steve Bruce was sat watching his son was, was playing in this, uh, in this playoff um, semi-final at Hillsborough. And he was sat in front of me and I'm sat behind and I think I was manager of West Brom at the time and he was at Birmingham. And, uh, the, you know, obviously the crowd, there's a big crowd there for that. Yeah. And they sang the high old Sheffield Wednesday and he's heard it and he's turned around to me and gone, and I've gone, yeah. I know it's a sm small crowd today, like yeah. not now as it should be, he went, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Steve Bruce who's played <laughs> like in front of Manchester United supporters. Yeah. But like, It's quite a tingle up the spine. Yeah. Oh, it is. And they don't know what they've got, but the supporters, I don't think they realise how they're held in esteem 
at other places in this in this country, and they are. You know, everybody says, "Well, we've got the best sports in the country," and I'm fortunate enough to have I've played at some of the biggest and the best. I've managed West Brom, and I thought they were fantastic. I loved Stoke's crowd, but Wednesday's was just entirely different. And it's you know, it's not just the noise and the way they support it. They've got a humour about them. We we went to Preston, and we we turned Preston over, battered Preston, and we're coming out of the ground. And it's like there's one road in and one road out, and we can't get out. So this Wednesday supporter, he's decided he's going to stop the traffic. For, so he stands in the traffic, and he's, he's with his mate, and his mate ain't got out to do, because he's, he's, the other one's yeah. giving it that. So he decides he'll, he's got his parka coat on, he's stood there, and drops his trousers, completely <laughs> nothing on for some reason, <laughs> stood <laughs> stopping the traffic from the other way in front of our bus. And I'm like, oh, yeah. God, there's only our lot could do this. <laughs> but but it was, they were just good fun all over the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Carlos Carvalho, uh, when he was appointed, I scratched, who? Oh, Wikipedia wasn't telling me a lot. Oh, well, he did tell me, but I, again, I thought he's had that many jobs, you know, and yeah. I think the fans' reaction, they were very underwhelmed. But this guy has made sense of an awful lot happening in a, a short time. Loads of new players, mm -hmm. put them together, spirit. Yeah, but the spirit comes when, when you're winning games mm -hmm. and you get that momentum, certainly down at that club. Mm -hmm. You get that going, it's, it becomes unstoppable. It really does. And you, you couldn't stop it if you wanted to and, you know, because it's bubbling. And like, you know, and I, I, I really thought we, we played a game once down at, um, uh, down at Middlewood and we played, I can't remember who it was, but um, Steve Agnew was there and he's, he's Andy Rhodes, his brother-in-law, and we played them behind closed doors, just at a reserve game, mm. and they stayed for something to eat with us, and he was there, and he, he was nice enough to ring Andy um, the day yeah. after and said, you know what, I've never heard that, the bubble around the ground, and we really had that, and I thought, <coughs> you know, I'd, I, I, I don't know how to sound arrogant, but I, th I think I had the best win uh, ratio for a long, long time down there. I think it's the second best they've had, but, the thing that I think I did more, that I was most pleased with, was we got Wednesday going again. We got that bubble, we got that bounce. And like I say, I, I used to say some things, this is Sheffield Wednesday, we do what we want. I mm. thought it, it was cocky and other people didn't like it, but I, I, I yeah. felt it and, 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 and the club, I felt that's what we needed. Yeah. You know, we, we do what we want. We, you know, we go down to Dagenham and take it over. I got sent off, but we, <laughs> we'd, we'd take over yeah. the whole ground and we go to Rochdale and you take over the whole ground, which is fantastic, but you don't want to be taking over the whole ground. You shouldn't be playing at that level. You should be going to Old Trafford yeah. and taking over. But you started that ball rolling. You turned it around. Yeah. There were a lot of players that had been signed mm. that almost immediately needed to, 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 to it, it had out. to change and it wasn't uh, nice because like you know you, you, I'm, I'm watching the first game I'd, I'd been managing and then I got the Wednesday job and you knew it's not going particularly well because of where it was the first game I saw I'm thinking you wouldn't see this on a parks pitch it was horrendous it was against MK Dons and I wasn't picking the team and I was nothing to do with it and I said I'm just going to sit up top and just watch and then I'll come down afterwards I'd only joined the day before and I just thought, I, I can't do that. I can't watch this and not say anything. So I went in half time and said, look, we, we might as well start as we mean to go on. We ain't having this. I think I substituted two of them, changed it over. I was a bit nasty, got in people's faces. And it had to happen because I, I knew Wednesday were, we weren't good because of where we were. But I went there talking about, hey, if we can really get going here, we can get that top six. Mm. Within 24 hours, I'm thinking, we're going to like that really pull the stops out not to yeah. go down here because it was pathetic honestly and then it just needed to completely change but we didn't have what Mr Chanshir is doing now in terms of money mm. it was all like you know smoke and mirrors oh, we're doing this and we're doing that the reality was we weren't so we, I had to get different types of players in you know we weren't signing Forestieri at three million and, and spending money we were taking and, and I don't mean this in a nasty way, Rob Jones from Scunthorpe's Reserves, like uh, Danny Barr on loan. We were doing all those kind of things and they did a sterling job because of the people that they were. And then, you know, one of the things that, that um, I, I've been taught, not taught, but you pick up, there's two things that the opposition can't stop you doing, running and talking. So we're gonna get good at those. And we got them so fit, we worked them so hard. And then I used to take them up to Grenaside because you would know I did that as a player with Howard. Yeah. And I, did, I remember saying to the players, um, what do we get from this? And they all say the same thing, fitness. You do, but that's not why we did it. 
we did it for that character, for that bonding, get them together. Who wants to be in Grenoside Woods in December, throwing yeah. it down in the mud? No, but it really got them together. Another thing you did, I know it was protracted, and we haven't got time to go into the protracted chase. You signed Jose Semedo. Hmm. It's the one player that's still there now and embodies we, so much of what the club is about. Well, I didn't go for players at that time because I needed them who could handle Wednesday, but not handle Wednesday, handle Wednesday not doing very well. We're in hmm. Division 1. I needed players who were honest, who had a right good go. They might not be the most talented, but we needed to get that there. And, we, you know, there was none of this, oh, we want them up in two years. It was like, we want them up yesterday. Like, well, how are we going to do it? Anybody, any fool can come out and say, we want, you know, that's the target. The idea is, how are you going to get there? That's a tricky bit. But there was none of that. It was, oh, we want the club promoted. Like, you know, well, how are we going to do that? Because like, this team won't do it. It's only just stayed up. So Dave Jones took over from you, and mm. it was it was an unbelievable start to a managerial reign. He won back to back, back to back, week uh, yeah. in, week out. Yeah, well, that, that, that was... He um, deserves some credit for that, but obviously you do too. Um, it, yeah, he does. But and if you're a manager and you think you get a club promoted in 12 games, then you're not. But it, You wanted Wednesday to go up, but did it hurt? Of course. It, 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 it didn't, it didn't. It hurt because I wasn't there. It hurt because of that donut of a chairman says, I don't put up with failures. Sheffield Wednesday wouldn't even be out of that division if I hadn't managed how I did. And yeah. I'd, I'd promise you. Now, it was all, ah, well... I'm only going to interject here because mm. you treat as you find, and Milan Mandrick, to me, was somebody, certainly in the media, mm. that we, we got on with. Oh, yeah. He was also, I thought, a very good chairman for Sheffield Wednesday because without him, they wouldn't be where they are today. That's my personal opinion, mm. you know, and I respect the man, but I respect your opinion as well. Yeah. And it, we're, we're never going to agree on that. No, we're not, because you saw one side, I saw the inside, if you like. Now, when, you know, when, when Wednesday went up and went on that run, you know, I looked at it and, and you know, it is pleasing because you want the club to do well, but I still wanted to be there and to be sacked in the circumstances that I was. And it's like, you know, when you look back and you're not a stupid guy, but, Thank you know, you. If, if, well, you're not, but if you lose three games as a manager, mm. you're struggling. Mm. But I wasn't struggling. I was given another one against the team second from top who were absolutely flying over the road, but we beat them. Yeah. Do I get the sack the day after? No. I get the sack when England are playing Wednesday on Wednesday night. night. Oh, no, oh, you no. would know because, like I say, you're not stupid. Some politician once said, good times are very bad news. I got the boot during that game. In, in my experience, nearly all clubs and press officers are like oh, that when yes. it comes to it. You know, yeah, it's not, yeah. just, not just one. Yeah, no. Have you finally, we've got a minute left, got an image problem? You've got a great record. No, this. Why are you not managing? Because of this. I, tell, I, I, I say what I think, and, you know, and I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. I get the job done, but a lot of football clubs now, I, I, as I say, I spoke to Tony on Tuesday, there's a lot of football clubs not looking, in my view, for proper managers because they want to do the managing. They want to do the signing. They want to do the, like, not picking of the players, but I've worked with those kind of people. And, you know, I don't have to do it now. I would desperately want to get in a proper football club. And I will be successful because I think I have everywhere I've been. Like I say, Nottingham Forest can't prove it with results. You, you, you played for nine clubs. I got that wrong at the start, folks. Clough, you never played you. Never kicked a ball for I know you learn a lot from managers, and I would never, ever manage a player like he managed me. Did he uh, blank you? Just isolate you? What? Oh, no. No, the complete opposite. Oh, was, yeah, yeah. There yeah. was a lot of that one. <laughs> Goodness me, I'd like to be going on for another five hours. I can't. We've got ten seconds left. All that remains is thank Gary Megson. Appreciate Thanks that. ever so much. Yep. Really enjoyed yep. it. Thanks so thank so thank much. you, really James good. Greg. Uh, it'll be on uh, repeated tonight, but on my YouTube channel. See you next week. Bye.